Understood.org and the ad One of the most dominant home court. This is Crust. You can't catch me, you're not man enough. And that's all she wrote. End zone, touchdown. To Atlanta where the plays play and we ride on the things like this. It's time for the crushing we're going to double up the, the introductions. Well, we got the Williams family in here. Yes! First of all, let's shout out to uh, Orsi Software uh, for, again, doing our interviews. Make sure, please introduce Devin first and, and give him a little love, man. He's a, he's a vet of the show. Man, man. he keep getting taller, man. He <laughs> cut that out, man. And then when I grabbed him, his bigger shoes, that's all. Oh, that was it. he has, right now, he's working with about uh, 0% body fat. <laughs> As I grabbed him, he yoked up around here. Yeah. Just, but, hey, man, he's a gold medalist, man. Yeah. The champ is here, and this was crazy. Last time we had him, he talked about just the grind. He put the he and put it in he order. He put it out there. He was like, "Listen, when I go, I'm bringing gold back." He told us that. So, you know, like I said, I've known you for years, and just hearing you, and you know, from your dad. One of the greatest mustaches in, in, in history. Yeah. <laughs> one of the greatest in history. That's a fact. To when it happened, was it? What was it like, man? When you got to go at the USATF? Uh, it was great. I mean, I've been working so hard lately. Sorry, I've been what working. I've been working really hard lately, um, and I've been through a lot these past two years. Uh, a lot of injury, um, unexpected injuries. Uh, in 2018, I sat out the whole 2018 season. Um, 2019, first meet, I injured my heel, broke the back of my heel. So I had to sit out again for a couple more weeks. Wow. So it was just a lot of emotion that I've been through. You to see what he's been through. I mean, last Olympics in London, you were there. He was, he was trying to get there. No, when it, it wasn't London. I'm, Rio. Rio. 2016. Mm. 2016. I was in London. He was in London. I was in the London. next year, you were smiling with Big Ben. That's right. That's yeah, right. 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 But when you went to Rio mm. and you saw what he was going through and working, what was it like to to see him become now win that gold medal? Uh, Devin has definitely had a journey over however many years we've been running. Um, Rio or 2016 was interesting because uh, he did have a good Olympic trials, but he placed fifth. And so um, uh, I think it was still a good opportunity, uh, and I was very grateful that he came to support me in Rio. But I knew in the years to come, like, he would definitely be on the team, like, without a doubt. Um, and so 2017, it was. Um, and, and this was huge, watching him win his first U.S. title. Um, I couldn't be at the track for the full two days because the heptathlon was actually after right, the right, decathlon right. but I was keeping up with the live stream and then going out there for the end part of the day and uh, I was just you know screaming in my hotel room as I'm watching the live stream and he's you know getting a PR or he's you know doing this that and the third because I know how much work goes into it I right. see him day in and day out um, practicing and I mean I tell everyone all the time he's my favorite athlete just in the how resilient he's been and just how he keeps fighting no matter what and um, and that he's able to you know show his hard work just by you know winning or making teams or whatever it's like it's just such a product of being so resilient over the years I say it again for me please <laughs> Devin that. is my favorite athlete yeah. uh, I there. like that yeah no for, for sure for, for both of you guys the the discipline it takes to get to this I want to do this until they have to figure out the work that goes into it. <laughs> Talk about the discipline. Uh, you got to be super disciplined. Uh, like I tell people, it's good to be motivated, but it's way better to be disciplined because you're going to have days that you feel motivated, but if you're not disciplined, you're not going to do it when you don't feel motivated. Right. right? If you're disciplined, you're going to do it even when you don't feel motivated. Wow. So if you're disciplined, like, that's, you really got to be disciplined to, to make it in anything in life, I think, but especially in sports uh, where everybody's, working as hard as you, um, you know, you got to be willing to just go the extra mile um, in certain areas. Well, I'll take us a break. When we come back, we're going to introduce you to the one that is a newbie to our show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, break in a little bit. Yeah, break in a little bit. Yeah, talk to a little bit. And then you just, you don't really understand how fascinating this is to a brother-sister duo to do two of the two. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this multiple. Yeah. We'll talk to you when we get back. Check. Honey, what you cook for dinner tonight? Do you want the good news or the bad news first? The bad news first. I cooked nothing. Well, that's the good news then. Uh huh. Well, there's no bad news then because tonight we're gonna have Jack Palace. Call Jack Palace for authentic Caribbean cuisine, including vegetarian entrees with authentic Caribbean flavor. Call 770-892-5049, located at 6221. Strolling along in goodwill, when just past that mid-century side table and denim jacket, you spotted them, nestled in their display case. Miniature donut earrings. Oh, yes! Yes! Your favorite half-breakfast pastry, half-all-day dessert food, made into your favorite form of ear candy. Oh, my! Those bejeweled sprinkles have satisfied some unknown hunger within you. Shh! Do you smell that? That's the sugary scent of shopping success. For this is Goodwill. And with every item you buy, you fund local job training and more. So go forth. Bring home those donut earrings. And bring home so much good to your community. Goodwill. Bring good home. Brought to you by Goodwill and the Ad Council. Energizing a nation, one listener at a time. It's SSNATL.com. Radio that's not dumbed down. And uh, we're back. So, I do a little introduction. Um, Let's go, Kendall. I did it for you. Kendall, <laughs> heptathlete, yeah. University of Georgia, champion. Go Dogs. Uh, been to Rio. World championships. Been around the world. Talk to us about when did you know? We asked Devin this. When did you know that you love track and field? Mm. That's a good question. I think I made a, um, like a, a National Scholastic Sports Foundation uh, did this thing where they took a bunch of, like, elite young kids and they took us overseas. We competed in Puerto Rico. And um, it wasn't technically like a team USA event but we represented USA over there and um I think that was the moment where I realized that like I really like this sport getting the ability to travel everywhere meet people from all over the country because we're coming together as one team um and so like you know getting to know these different people these different coaches and um and traveling I think that's when I really kind of fell in love with the sport and realized that I could take the sport to the next level explain to everybody all the events that go into your sport. Yeah, the heptathlon is seven events, so it's the. Uh, <laughs> I can't even ever get over that. <laughs> it's the hundred meter hurdles, high jump, shot put, two hundred, long jump, javelin, eight hundred, and it's over uh, two days. So the competition is basically just all day for two days. You're out there in the elements, rain, sun, cold, wind, everything, um, just battling with the field of women or the field of men in the decathlon. Um, and, uh, yeah, for two days straight. So we had to ask, I always ask this, out of the seven, best and one you have to work on? Oh, best, I would say 100-meter uh, hurdles, probably. And long jump. Long jump has gotten really strong over the years as well. Uh, worst, without a doubt, the 800. Without a doubt, the 800, and without a doubt, the shot put. Uh, I have the most room for growth. <laughs> so, so you cool with on that javelin? <laughs> <laughs> the, the javelin it's not where it needs to be right but it's got it's it's edged out of that category of being my worst i would say okay <laughs> so okay. yeah the javelin has actually saved me a couple times surprisingly so i think right. as i've figured out more of the technique i'm starting to like it more and i feel like that's how you know the shot put in the 800 would be like once i kind of figure it out a little bit more then it'll start clicking and it'll become easier and i'll become better at it and i think that's the beauty of the multi-events too is um you have so many events, you're not going to be perfect at all of them. Right, right, right. You're right. always going to have room for growth. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that's so what did you get better at? Which one 
from when we were, when we talked, which ones you felt like you got better than to, to make you the U.S. champ? Uh, definitely discus, definitely pole vault, um, and what else did I? You yeah. peered in javelin too, right? In javelin, yeah. yeah. But my javelin's been pretty good, but yeah. I would say mostly my discus and my pole vault jumped up. Yeah. What killed me, make sure both of them can get down on them, them hurdles hard. I know that's your favorite. Yeah, yeah. Hearing yeah. All, that service, yeah. I mean. all this doing is reaffirming why I quit track. <laughs> 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 this, 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 it's just reaffirming. Yeah. Because again, the extra like when you're a sprinter, you just have to work on this and then go. Yeah. Y'all, <laughs> y'all like got fifty million things that y'all got to work on mm. yeah. outside of. My conditioning, now I got to go do technique. That's what I tell people. It's it's always interesting because I feel like I could be wrong, but if I was doing one event, I feel like I will get bored just doing that every single and day. And I can, I can see that. Yeah, and, and doing the decathlon, it's, we do kind of like the same the same type of stuff from week to week uh, each day. Like we'll do like the same three or four events on Monday and so on. Mm-hmm. But it always feels like it's a new practice just because it's always right. fresh. Right. Okay, but it is hard though. So, Kendall, give me your workout week. Workout week. Yeah, I would say workout day because it could be it switches from day to day. I'm sure. Yeah, it does. I guess it kind of follows the same formula from week to week. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I guess are our heavier days. So we'll do um, hurdles or a sprint session. Then we'll go into like a jump session, either high jump or long jump. Um, and then after that, we'll do more of our conditioning type training. Mm-hmm. Um, Tuesdays are usually um, our throwing days, so we'll throw probably primarily shot, um, and then we'll go and lift. Uh, and so it kind of follows that formula. Although today it was a little bit different. We uh, did high jump today and, and shot put, and then had a really long lift. So <laughs> I mean, today it was a three-hour practice day. So I, I feel um, I feel lazy as heck right now. <laughs> <laughs> they don't worked out yeah. three hours, and then they hit fresh looking like. <laughs> Ready for our interview? <laughs> we probably have about three or four meetings today. And I'm sitting here like, I tired for waking up this morning. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> bro, they done, they done did like 50 million workouts. Yeah, it's yeah, a it was, it's um, amazing, yeah. man. Just sitting there because, you know, th- this guy, you know, he, he, when he do a workout, he, he, some way he got he to take off his shirt. And he, <laughs> he got a tank top oh, on. Yeah. in the pictures now. <laughs> and, 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 as I'm sitting here with a Chick-fil-A biscuit <laughs> in my hand with grape jelly. <laughs> And a Coke. <laughs> Shout out to me for not drinking this, this two yeah. days in a row no, without a soda. You guys have uh, reinvigorated. So talk about my, yeah. meal plan. I appreciate that. Um, no actual, like, I mean, I guess some athletes do have, like, a very, very structured and strict um, diet. I know for me, um, I just try to cook as much as I can. I feel like um, I do a better job putting stuff into my body when, like, I'm responsible for, like, making it and buying it versus, like, if I'm eating out all the time or something like that. Um, so trying to cook more. And then we, we burn so many calories that yeah. um, I'm, I'm not, like, super strict on the diet. Um, so you, you can go get that Popeye's chicken sandwich. You ain't worried I guess about it depends. It. Well, I don't <laughs> worry about it depending on what day I had for oh, practice. Okay. What's on the schedule? <laughs> so yeah, it might be some pain. Yeah, it might be a bad day to eat that. It might be a bad day to eat it. <laughs> Uh, so not not super strict, but um, of course you just always want to put good things right, in your body. Right, right. Because it's like putting fuel in the car. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You put that nine to three. It's nine to three out time. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah you don't run on regular. So no, talk to me, Debbie. Either. When you when you stepped at the top of the podium. Oh man, I'm I so mean, proud. All of, you you did it before, and you've seen where you worked at. Kendall's been there. You know, how was it for you when you stepped up there? Well, I was still. I was still struggling from the 15, like trying to catch my breath. So my Think dad, about y'all the camera, yeah. yeah. I, was, I was still cramping, uh, but I mean, it felt good because, um, you know, it felt good taking that big step onto the big podium. Yeah. The the number one spot. Yes, sir. Um, but yeah, I was still hurting from the race, but just from everything I've been through from the past two years, like that's all I was thinking about really is just overcoming all that, and then now like, I get a step. Could that, that seem like torture spot. to me? You done ran nine events, now I got to run 1,500 to finish? Yeah. I was thinking about that, too. I talked to somebody the other day. I was like, that's really the only place you could put the 15 because if you put it at the yeah, beginning, you, you won't be able to do anything else. You'll be tired after everything. Yeah, so. I had some good times, though. Yeah. I, am, I am blown away by them. They, they have, like, I'm, I'm going running tomorrow. <laughs> I'm not. I go live. I, I'm, I'm, going running tomorrow. <laughs> I'm back. I'm officially back now. Stay with us, man. <laughs> Marie K. 
Kellender's knows that you may not have time to roll out dough for a perfectly flaky crust that's made from scratch. Or enough time to mix vegetables with all white meat chicken and a homemade gravy. She knows you may not have a moment to crimp the edges of your favorite chicken pot pie. But Marie Callender's does. And when she's done, all you need to do is find time to grab someone special. Sit down and save her. Marie Callender's. It's time to save Lots of people meet friends and potential love interests online through dating sites, social media, or mobile apps. It can be a great way to meet people, but not everyone is who they say they are online. In fact, scams related to online relationships are on the rise. It's a red flag if the person wants to move quickly to personal email or instant messaging to continue talking. Professors love quickly, claims to be from the United States but is working or traveling abroad, plans to visit but cancels at the last minute, ask for money to deal with an emergency or ask you to open a bank account for them. Here are some things you can do. Cut off contact if you suspect a scam. Watch your wallet. Don't wire money, send cash, or put money on gift cards for someone you know only online. Learn more about online relationship scams at aarp.org backslash fraudwatch network. It is Sean Prime from Inside the Loop with myself and Brenna B. And I've been talking about Jeans Body Tech for a minute simply because it's a premier gym in a pristine spot without a premium price. All the weight you need, all the machines you want, free parking. All in Buckhead, come on, it's crazy. 700 Miami Circle is where you want to work out today. And for those who are feeling a little bit down because you may not have followed through on the healthy New Year resolution thing, hey, it's still the new year. You can start today. Look at yourself a year from now, and hello, is that you? Because you're looking good, like snack-like. Yes, you are. 700 Miami Circle, or go to Facebook.com forward slash Jeans Body Tech, also known as JBT Fitness. Either way, 49 bucks is nothing to pay to feel your best every day. Our freedom and security are made possible through the service and sacrifice of our military and first responders. The Gary Sinise Foundation provides many outreach programs supporting these brave men and women. Join us. Donate at GarySiniseFoundation.org. If you're looking for that much it. <laughs> You're in the wrong place. It's the nation's urban internet station, Sensation Station Network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, we're back, man. And you listen to the Crush Sports Talk right here on the Sensation Station Network. It's your boy, E. Glaze, Maceo. Here with the Williams family. Kelly Go Evans. Go uh, if you missed the first hour, man, you missed uh, another champion. It's championship day. Championship uh, day. Um, we're going to finish up the show. We got a guy that we... We'll introduce you to make sure mention him alive, CL. That's how I got. I never knew his real name, but I knew CL. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> one, 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 one of the. Yeah, yeah. We, we'll, we'll talk, talk about to it. Yeah, we'll get into it. Yeah. I, I mean, I know we all talk about things happening in the reality of what's happening in your life. Do y'all? I mean, do y'all get what y'all are doing? I mean, do you understand that you guys are working the two toughest sports in track and field, and, and doing it at a dominant level? And y'all friends right here got jobs. <laughs> I mean, do we, I mean, does I mean? I know y'all get this question a lot, but yeah. just sometimes I'm looking like you're going to the world championships together. You're going to be this way in this place. Does it really ever hit? Like, bro, we doing this, sis. We about to kill them out here when we hit the track today. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it it hit me when we were in London together. Uh, competing at our first world championships. I'm just uh, in London. Yeah, yeah, just we, I mean, we're like really traveling the world, right? <laughs> we talked about it. Like, we actually doing it. Like, my, right. home, my home, I'm going to go clock in. <laughs> <laughs> you got him a good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was just really cool. I think it would be, you know, another amazing experience when we're on the flight to Doha. Um, Guitar later. Listen to that. Yeah, yeah, seeing places that you know you man, you would never ever get to see. Um, you know, on a regular basis. It's a blessing that we get to do it all as a family. Like the parents coming too. Every yeah, everybody. We can share it all together. That's like really special. Yeah. We asked you this last time you were here, and continuing to watch you go through the because you guys are professional athletes, and you're doing something you love. Every now and then, is that that little extra that kind of push you because you like. Yeah, I'm in a good little place. Yeah, I'm living pretty good doing this. Yeah, yeah. All my life I wanted to be a pro athlete. And when I was younger, I thought I'd be playing football. Uh, but when I grew older, I started liking track more and, and feeling like that was my lane. Right. Um, Find your fit, boy, Lord. Yeah. Have mercy. So that's, that's a blessing. 
His last year, kid, we were begging him, please give us one more year. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Please give us one more year, receiver. Bro. You, 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 can't coach, you can't coach the speed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or the side. We you understand coach. you're going to be a world champion. <laughs> we, we need you this high school year to give us one more year. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, you definitely going to play. I mean, every year, Devin, I ain't, I'm lying. I was like, you definitely going to play this year? We'll see. Yeah. 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 You definitely going to play this year? Yeah, see, yeah, you got to, you know, but uh, Kendall, when did you, what, what did you want to be a professional athlete? Uh, not necessarily. That wasn't like my whole dream. I actually got into sports just because Devin was in sports. Right, right. right. And uh, my parents, you know, I would, you know, go to his baseball games and stuff and just sit there. My parents were like, okay, what is she going to do? Right. So, <laughs> this, since he pranks, yeah. Yeah. come on. So, then it got to a point where it's like, okay, let's find something that Man, you she's good at. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me see you jump. <laughs> she, she, was <laughs> a, she was a cheerleader when I was uh, playing uh Pound ball, football. Yeah, yeah. I was. For, so I think she started off doing that. Mm -hmm. Started off doing that. Tried some other sports. Um, but, yeah, track is what really just stuck out. <laughs> basketball. I'll tell you like this, Mason. I'm going to lie to you. We used to be out there practicing. I don't know if she was there. But her dad would be over there. We, we used to practice on that practice field at Kale. And uh -huh. it was a track around her. Her dad, she ran my daughter one time. My daughter knew she wasn't going to be a track and field after messing with her daddy. So. <laughs> <laughs> but he was running them. Right. And I was yeah. sitting there like, there's some speed out here. I just yeah. got to get it. I, but... Talk about the influence of dad. And, you know, he was a track coach. He trucked out East Cobb. Yeah. East Cobb track, track club. Mm -hmm. Talk about dad. Huge influence. Uh, big part in our career, seeing as how he coached us uh, up until college. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he taught us kind of everything we know. I think he uh, is why we're such great hurdlers. I mean, he was always finding, like, new drills to do, new techniques. I mean, even now he still coaches a heat track club. Um, and... Uh, so, yeah, he was always just looking for ways to make us better without overly pushing us. Because some right. parents can be very, oh, like... Oh, helicopter. Yeah, yeah. really, yeah. helicopter. <laughs> but he really understood that, like, the longevity of the sport. And he's like, if they're going to last to be at, be at the professional level, then we can't push them right now when they're seven, eight years old. He always said track's a journey. Track's a journey. Like, that was his thing. He right. always said track is a journey. Yeah. And I think what's even cooler is he wasn't our first track coach. He got into – he learned the sport yeah. because we were in it. Yeah. And eventually mm. became our coach and, yeah. and coached all these people in the school. Yeah. And he the right Were y'all with Dwyer's yeah. dad? Yeah. 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 John yeah. Dwyer's dad was, was the our first coach. He was yeah. the coach. Right. Yeah. So their dad need to write a book. <laughs> For real. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Not, not, not the LeVar Ball way. Yeah. <laughs> but the Mr. Williams way. Yeah. Like, th this works. Yeah. 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 That's crazy. And, and for you guys, UGA – I mean, now y'all UGA legends now. Yeah. I know they want to always prop y'all up now. To, they were quick I to slap that up there. <laughs> yes, the UGA guys. Yeah. Yeah. The UGA was put it up there real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need that. Yeah. Can, can we get pictures of them <laughs> all over this field? Them. Yes, yes, yes. Let's send them. Uh, yeah. 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 Let's get that Georgia stuff on them real quick. Let's get this on them real quick. Yeah, yeah. they progressed us for real though. Like We owe a lot to Georgia um, just for taking us to the next level. I mean, mm -hmm. my dad coached us to a, to a high level, and then uh, Petro Scipriano at Georgia, our coach, just took us to that next just level and gave us the it. technique. And, wow. Yeah. yeah. So we owe a lot to the University of Georgia. But did both of y'all not play? Y'all won part of the national championship team. Oh, Gradu nah. They won. The, the women won a year after yeah. I graduated. I was like, what? Yeah. But, crazy? Yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> Come on, Athens. <laughs> No. What you doing, coach? They win <laughs> championships with me. I'm like, what well, you got the decat? You know so the world, crazy. the world champions league, and, <laughs> and then they win. Yeah, the win. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I take pride in being able to be there on the come up. Yeah, right. well, you yeah, were yeah. there before the foundation. Yeah, Could exactly. y'all? I mean, you know about SEC track and field, national track and field. That's the, the Oregon's, the Arkansas's, mm -hmm. the LSU's, and all that. But y'all brought a a style to Georgia. Y'all brought that mentality of Georgia to win in track and field. Right. Yeah, because people thought it was so impressive that we could. Uh, come home with like second place or third place team titles with just field events. Right. And so that was actually kind of cool and different because, you know, most programs, the LSUs, the Arkansas's, uh, you know, Texas A&M, uh, everything just has such a, you know, strong sprints program. Mm. Um, so we, you know, we did it with just our heptathletes, decathletes, jumpers. Uh, yeah, so yeah. that was pretty cool. We come back, we're going to wrap it up with our duo. I'm so happy that they're here. Man. <laughs> Kale High School, I will be over there talking because I need some retired Jerseys oh, for let, me, let me make this Nike list right there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, stay with us.
some knowledge belongs to us and us alone. The way our girlfriends walk, the way they talk, the way they touch their hair. We hold details that only a sister can know about her girls. But what about our other girls? The ones that we carry with us every day. Can we describe them when everything's right? Can we feel when something's wrong? Our bond with our sister girls gives life. But knowing your breasts can save it. You don't know what Go to knowyourgirls.org for the facts you need on breast health. That's knowyourgirls.org. Brought to you by Susan G. Coleman and the Ad Council. You don't know what Coming to Tampa Bay, I said we want to win a Super Bowl, and I believe we will. From IamSecond.com, we came close, but never really did win that championship. Former NFL head coach Tony Dungy. At the end of my sixth year, I was fired, and it was one of the biggest disappointments of my life. Next year, I'm in Indianapolis, get to the playoffs, but get knocked out again. And for the next couple of years, it's the same thing. Everyone is saying Colts are never going to win one. And I did wonder why didn't it pan out the way I thought it would. But I determined that I had to have Christ first and that everything else came below that, including my own desires. The next year, that ended up being our year to, to go to the Super Bowl and win it. And it was a wonderful feeling. Every decision I make, I'm going to make it through the lens of Jesus Christ. And he got us to that ultimate victory. I'm Tony Dungy, and I am second. Oh, long time no see. It's me, the rock t-shirt in the back of your closet. Dude, remember? You crowd surfed in me, man. But you haven't worn me in like forever. I get it, you're retired. But I still got some rock left in me. So take me to Goodwill, where I can really make a difference. Your donations to Goodwill create jobs, training programs, and education assistance for people in your community. To find your nearest donation center, go to Goodwill.org. Donate stuff. Create jobs. A message from Goodwill and the Ad Council. Hey, we're back, man. Uh, I, I just, like I said, man, this is uh, groundbreaking. So what's next for both of you guys? I know we... We know the world championship is in sight in September, but is there anything in between? I know you told me a little bit about Devin, but are you going to continue working out? Do you do, do you get bit. another event in then? What what is it that you try to do between now and world championships? Uh, I'm gonna try to do one uh, meet in Paris. That's it's a triathlon, which is just I'm never Paris. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in yet. I'm not in the meet. It's a triathlon. <laughs> yeah, that's something that's unique. Um, they don't they don't com- uh, compete in triathlons which is in this triathlon it'd be the long jump hurdles and shot put so it's like something that nobody really does but they're just having it at this meet so i want to go there and do that wow and that'll be like a tune-up before i go uh to worlds and i might just do some like smaller events or smaller meets and just do like single events there uh, just for like competitive practice but wow yeah not too much though what about you um, nothing on the schedule yet, um, before world championships, but, um, Asian could call and say, oh, I've got something lined up for you, you know, yeah. in a week and a half over and you, you leave, you know, in, in two days to go spend a week in Europe. So it's like, yeah, you kind of so just got to play it by ear. <laughs> not, um, not a so. Sacramento. I, yeah, no, I mean, because that's where, you know, track and field is really big over there. No that's where it's a lot like of the opportunities are. Like, yeah. yeah. And so it's kind of fun to go over there and, you know, do a competitive practice, like Devin said, and bounce around and, and have some fun with our individual events um, and just see different places and, you know, and compete. But they pros, man. They're doing what they love. Okay. Get paid for this it. This is my last question yeah. before we go to break, before we do it, get the photo. What can we expect in Qatar? Oh, really good performances. I think both of us are in really good shape. Um, and both of us are really healthy. Training yeah. keeps going well. <laughs> he swole older. So, <laughs> yeah, so as long as training keeps going well, our coach has like a plan to um, have us ready by World Championships. And so it's just a matter of, um, you know, putting those performances together and showing our shape while, you know, on those two days that we need them to show. So. And you know what we talked about last time. You know, you know what Guitar's I Guitar's already I been on my list. I so. didn't tell you the specifics, but you remember the gist of what I told yeah. you. And I don't, I don't ever compete for anything other than to win, so. We'll have to see. 
We thank you guys. We about to take some photos. Day three, no sodas for me. I'm inspired. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. We'll be right back. <laughs> Major key alert. Life is like school. You will be tested. So pass it. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. Brought to you by Get Schooled and the Ad Council. If you're a single man under the age of 35, you probably like to know what the ladies are looking for on an online dating site. A guy who had a few drinks and later got pulled over for buzz driving. See, that could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And doesn't a guy who's back living with his parents but calls them my roommates just scream Mr. Right? Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the app. Oh, long time no see. It's me, the rock t-shirt in the back of your closet. <laughs> Remember? You crowd surfed in me, man. But you haven't worn me in like forever. I get it, you're retired, but I still got some rock left in me. So take me to Goodwill, where I can really make a difference. Your donations to Goodwill create jobs, training programs, and education assistance for people in your community. To find your nearest donation center, go to goodwill.org. Donate stuff. Create jobs. A message from Goodwill and the Ad Council. Opiates has taken everything and everyone I've ever loved away from me. Everything. I blew my ankle out and I got prescribed pain pills by my doctor. If making my detox public is going to help somebody, I'm all for it. I just wish I would have had a warning. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth. Spread the truth. A message from Truth, the Ad Council, and ONDCP. Did you just look down at your phone? You did it again, didn't you? You know, you're flying down the road in a three-ton hunk of steel, and a text takes your eyes off the road for an average of five seconds. At 55 miles per hour, that's long enough to travel the length of a football field and cause some serious damage. Turn it off.